Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are doing an end of season review as Liverpool women finish third in the championship but we'll just address it. <laughs> this is really weird. We're back, we're in the studio, we're back together. It's so it's so strange. I don't know how I feel about it. It's so strange filming in the flesh and it's yeah. not at, on a match day because that's really it's the only weird. Time. Like I feel really weird at this at this moment. Yeah. I was I was thinking earlier it's been over a year. Since I've been in this room. I'm sure. I think I was saying to some the other day. I'm sure the last time I filmed in here for our channel was like early March. And I think it was with Grace from Miss Kiss. Wow. I think that, that's the last time. I don't even think it was it me just, and you. It's just, oh my God. Yeah. It's just so strange. It's strange. There's new chairs. There's new cameras. There's new lights. Tom's in a different room now. It's, I know. So he can't chip in, which is a bit sad, but... But the banter's still here. <laughs> Woohoo. Yeah. Oh well, God. let's dive straight into it then. Okay. Obviously, Liverpool women's first season in the championship. Um, I, th- I was saying earlier on, I think we we sort of looked at it a little bit harshly throughout the season, I'd probably say. I think mm-hmm. there was definitely moments where we were like, oh... You know, the season's not going well, this has happened, this has happened. But when you actually look back on it and reflect on it, we actually did okay. I think just because we didn't get promoted straight away and we were in top spot the whole time and Mm. blowing teams out the water that everyone was like, oh, wow, this is just going to be terrible. But I think all things considered, we actually did all right. I think we did. I think the only reason why we all think that it's been a failure of a season is because everyone was so open with Mm. what the target was. So, and obviously when you, when you don't reach that, you sort of think uh, automatically that's like a failure, which ultimately it was because we know, we know that that was the only thing that was going to make us believe that it was a good season if that would have been the outcome. And obviously promotion didn't happen. Um, but yeah, when you do sort of like sit and then look through like how many wins we got, how many draws we've got, we only lost three times. Mm. So it's not like we weren't good. It's just we weren't good to the standards that we'd set, ev- that everyone had set before the season had even started. Um, I think so many good things have happened throughout the season, as well as some really like tough things that everyone's had to deal with. Um, so it's really been like crazy yeah it's been um, up and, it's been very up and down at times really isn't it? yeah like a roller coaster yeah. up and down side to side like a roller coaster <laughs> oh god i, um, I haven't missed you oh god. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but we'll 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 focus on the start of the season at first we got off to a really good start you know three ri- three wins and, a, and one draw in mm. our open four matches um you know off to a flyer we it kind of you know fizzles out a little bit going into into Christmas start of this year and I think that's really when those back end of fixtures though were tough they were really we, we did tough. have some really tough games it, we it, had Durham and Leicester yeah. one week after each after, other after each other yeah. and them being like your two main rivals alongside Sheffield United for mm. promotion that was going to be tough yeah. um but yeah you know start, start the season really well Great win against Man United in the FA Cup. You know, I think spirits are high in the team. You know, you've had some new players come in. Spirits spirit are high with all them. And then, you know, beginning of this year, I think that's what everyone mainly focuses on about our season is that mm-hmm. that poor patch of a couple of weeks just before Christmas and just after Christmas. Would you kind yeah. of agree that it wasn't... That maybe um, that was maybe make or break for our season? I think where we where we lost it was before Christmas. Yeah. In all honesty, those those run of two fixtures where we really either needed to draw or win both both of them, I think that's where where promotion really started to like drift yeah. away. Because I think it was that Leicester defeat away. I th- yeah, it was it was the Durham game as well because it was the, the the performances weren't there, and I think that's what kind of hurts even more sometimes like it's it's fair enough if you get beat by a good side but put up a really good fight it's when you get sort of rolled over by a good yeah. side which is when um questions start to be asked but I definitely think it was around that period uh, where we started to lose we started to lose grip of that that, that top spot because we were right neck and neck throughout the whole of the first yeah. um few months of opening of the season 
And then you go into Christmas thinking, okay, like, yeah, that's not great, but we can put this all right. I think our first yeah. game back was London Bees. Got cancelled in the end. Yeah. To, no, London City, sorry. We had to replay it. One of the London teams, can't remember now. Um, and then we, Ricky Jepsen leaves by mutual consent. And yeah. then you're thinking, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, damn. Like, I, I'm, I still find it hard to process that. I, I can't believe still, that was this season. It feels so long ago. It does. It feels so long ago. And also, it's just kind of like, I think maybe I I might have noticed it a little bit more just because I could, I could attend games. Mm-hmm. But just not seeing here on the touchline, it's just not seeing something you're so used to. It's and like having her thoughts post-match and stuff like that. Like, it was hard. I think it was hard for a lot of Liverpool fans to sort of grasp. Um, You can kind of understand... Why, but then also from, you know, from a from a fan perspective, it was tough. It was that really was hard. Really yeah, it was really hard, and you know, Vicky was always so good to us, and and still is. Mm. And it's just kind of like, oh wow, it was like, a shock. Yeah, because we when we started this, she was there, and she she gave us like you know she welcomed us from the, the very first match that we attended, and the mm-hmm. very first minute that we set all this up. Um. So to kind of like have that for for three seasons and then it and then it it go when you weren't expecting it, like you know that that last game that we did like post match with her before before Christmas and you're not you're thinking oh yeah see you in the new year like oh mate, it was horrible yeah, I think it, it actually probably affected us you yeah. know and whether we consciously knew that or not I feel like in a way my whole attitude towards um, football and like what we do at that point I think switch a little bit mm. don't get me wrong it didn't i think it just took me a bit of time to, yes, yes, to, i got back into yeah. it but for a few weeks i was like i don't want to i don't i don't want to sort of be involved in that environment yeah. much more just because it was such um it was just really difficult to one i think the one thing that i've pointed out throughout the whole of the season which is you know what i think the club get criticized rightly or wrongly a lot a hell of a lot especially this last season when we got relegated and this season but regardless of all the decisions they do or don't make the one thing i would ask from them is to just keep everyone informed mm. which they hadn't which they didn't do yeah i don't think they did and well you're enough still, you're anyways. still kind of you're We're still, still, I, I still, I still feel that way yeah, yeah yeah like you you don't know exactly we'll never know exactly what happened um i mean that's that's confidential stuff. Yeah, you don't not, expect to know. Yeah, it's not our business. But it? it's like, I just felt so out of the loop. Um, and then it sort of then pans back onto us because we use this to give information, but we don't have any information to give. So it was really, really difficult. But yeah, that that period of the first few games where we didn't have Vicky and Amber in charge. No sly and Amber, by the way, I think Amber's lovely and she's, she's done amazing. She's done an amazing job, yeah. Um, I think she was thrown into a really difficult situation as anyone would have done if they yeah. were thrown into it. Um, but those first few games was really lacklustre. There was not a lot of energy going on. Yeah. Um, and I think the players were still processing it as well because yeah. they'd only found out a couple of hours before everyone else found out, yeah. which was just insane. Yeah. And I think you could kind of see that. I, I remember um, Nifar, he did. Oh, that interview will stick with me for a long yeah, time. Yeah, her post-match, I think it was the Leicester defeat at home. I want to say it was that one. Yeah. Um, and you could just see in her face her whole body language. Just, you know, that was when her promotion was officially over. Like, you She co- just looked mentally exhausted. Yeah, she just looked drained. And it was just, it was so, it was so hard to, to like, sort of see that mm. and, you know, for her to for a captain as well, yeah, someone who you look up, you look up to to lead the team, yeah. to lead like all of us, so. yeah. And she's obviously had to be the one to come out that day and do the yeah. post match stuff and do press and she because probably didn't want to. At and all, yeah, she she didn't probably didn't want to just as much as any other other of the other players yeah. did, or maybe even Amber herself. You don't know, but yeah, that was I think that was really tough, and then it was kind of hard because for a lot of the season when we were doing our videos, it was kind of like well, you know promotion's still there you know yeah it, it, we're hanging on by a thread blah, blah blah and then that was a fish when you were like okay well promotion it's isn't like what, there now. what do we do now and it's kind of hard because you know if you're in the wsl and it's like right well you can't win the league we'll go for that champions league spot and that but then there's nothing else there was nothing else, there was to, fight nothing for, else was there? to play for and yeah. that was kind of tough because 
it's then just like, oh, we'll try and finish as high as possible. But mm. in the end, that's not going to do you any any good. It's not going to change the course of the no. season. Um, You're not going to get anything at the end yeah, of Yeah, exactly. You? But I mean, it, it's all very well saying that, I think, with the way that the rest of the season panned out and how good the team were finally looking, I think that's such a positive to take out from it. Because you know what? This team could have literally just folded and literally gone, rolled all the way down the table. Mm-hmm. Um, with everything that some of those players have been put through over the last three years, it would st- it so easily could have happened. But that yeah. just kind of shows how uh, professional all of them are, and fa- absolute fair play to Amber for really picking that team up and going again because not a lot of people would have been able to get those results out of the team when yeah. they were feeling that low. I think a lot of it probably had to do with introducing Kerry Holland. I think she's quite a massive part of why we started to be really good because it was something new, it was something exciting, something confident. Someone coming in who literally had no no chains or, or anything on her, she mm. could just go and, and do whatever. And I think she sort of instilled a bit more confidence in in the team, um, which which is probably why we saw that change in form for a while. I mean, I think, what is it at the end? Eight games unbeaten. Yeah. Which is just, which is amazing. We should be celebrating it, but because the fact we didn't get promoted, we're here like, oh, yeah, it's hard. It's so hard. Yeah. And I think because if you go back to like our video after, just after the announcement of, you know, the season being, um, you know, decided on points per game last season, it was like us, Emma and Chris, Mm. and we had a big discussion about it. And immediately it was like, promotion there's no there's nothing no, else nothing else we wanted and mm. so and um, right from right from the very start that was what the goal was mm. and i think because that's that's what the goal was and what everyone was just constantly thinking about and it hasn't been achieved you kind of do look at the season and think oh well that was terrible it's but, a fail. but it, it, you've but got it to actually, look deeper into yeah, it yeah I mean, yeah you've got to think of it as a as as a whole and actually look at it and think do you know what with everything that was sort of thrown at us in the last like you know, twelve months, we actually we're, we're actually doing all right. You know, teams do played do. good football as well. Yeah, and I think that's what the most important thing is to come out of the the back end of the season is. I think the team feel a lot more confident in themselves, mm-hmm. and I think they're gonna obviously depend on. Who who's here this you know coming the new season? Oh, don't Lauren, don't. I know. Well, that's that's a, that's like sort of the big talk. But I think now going into the summer is there will be players. What the around. hell's gonna go yeah. on? <laughs> there will be players who are out of contract. We've obviously suffered, you know, this season with lack of squad depth you know, injuries. Like last, you know, the game on Sunday we had th- oh. we had three players. And I'm on pretty the bench. sure about four of the players on the pitch were injured as yeah, well. So exactly. So it, you know you you were down to your bare bones at times. And I think that's a that's a huge talking point for me because if you want to get promoted straight away next season and then be challenging the season after and just go from strength to strength, you're going to need to invest in your squad and you're going to need to have players who can do that job. And, you, you know, Kerry Holland's a prime example of someone who's fresh out of, like, yeah. college and has come in... She who wants to get a, get a foot in yeah, the door? Yeah, exactly. She's got she's got nothing on her shoulders. She's got she's mm-hmm. just come in, fresh pair of legs, fresh eyes on a new team, and gone. I'm just here to play football. Yeah. But then you do need those players who have been involved in these situations yeah. and can just do you a job on game day. The, the the issue I have now, and it kind of pains me to say it a little bit, is is that is the pull of the badge strong enough, basically, yeah. to bring in these players that we so desperately need. To get out of get out of this league and as you said um, contend, I think it's going to be a tough task to one get out of that league and straight away contend for oh, the top spot. Yeah. I can't see that happening. You go for it. You, you want to be secure at least, wouldn't you? Um, because when you look at the likes of obviously Villa who went up this season, they're struggling as it is. They're in a relegation battle, yeah. and that's where yeah. the gap between the WSL and the Championship yeah. really shows. Um, I think if we've learned anything from this season in particular is that the championship is quality more than I more than I ever realized and you probably agree as well Um, like Durham were unbelievable when they played against us both on both occasions and I think they beat us twice beat once or twice in a friendly as well we played two friendlies I think one they beat us and one we won I think that's how it went but in both league in both leagues or we uh, we won one through one yeah yeah, so, and then when you look at Leicester, deservedly 
champions. Absolutely, I hope yeah. they go from strength to strength because yeah. Leicester deserves to be in the WSL. So do we. Like, yeah. there's but, so many players, but yeah. it is now a case of who the hell are we going to get in and yeah. who who are we going to lose? Yeah. Well, I think Leicester are a prime example of a of a team who really invested well in their squad. They have a perfect blend yeah. of youth and experience. Exactly. Don't they? Yeah. And then uh, we've mentioned it before this season, but you've got to look at Everton. Wow. You know, they, yeah. they were so strength close to, to relegation. They could have got relegated if it hadn't been for the for the whole saga with um, Yeovil City. But they just came back the next season and was like, okay, well, we've Let's throw le- the kitchen sink at it. We've learned from yeah. our mistakes. We know that we need to do better. And they've done better. And look at them now, do you know what I mean? Like, at, at, one, at one point, you know, Everton were really, really in a good position for Champions League. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, oh, wow, like... That could have been us. Like yeah. we could have done that. You just don't want to get left behind. These exactly. top teams are getting going from strength to strength, and a team, our team especially, you just don't want to get left behind. I think, and this is a bit of a bold statement now, if we're gonna struggle next season mm. to get out of the championship again, mm. I think we are. If 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 this season has proved anything, um, and if we don't go up next season, we're we're gonna be in in real trouble. Mm. I think. Which pains yeah. me to say, but I I know that's a bit of a downer on this video. Yeah. Um, but you hope we we just gonna have to see what happens this season. You know what, Raza signing that contract extension really put a spring in my step. I was like, come on, bring them all yeah. on now. And I think for a player like her as well, who's obviously you know, she's a she's a really good player. She's she's WSL level for me. Mm-hmm. And with the very whole, very what is it called? versatility as yeah well. yeah and with the whole thing of like you know the euros and stuff like that mm. like she wants to be in that that way of squad and she has been this season she's been called up and stuff like that but you know for a, a player like her she she's got to think what's best for her career mm-hmm. and the fact that she wants to stay here do another season in the championship with it's us good. Really good. Is, is really good and i think that's like that does show the pull of of the club yeah. and, and you know the people that that are in and around her because you know obviously if she wasn't in a she didn't want to be here, she wouldn't have stayed. Yeah, you look at Riley Foster as well signing that new deal yeah. Um, yeah. a couple of months ago. That That's positive as well. It's just, I mean, when you some some players I think we know probably will go, um, as what happens at the end of any mm. any season. I think Rince is one. That's it's a huge look, talking it's, point. It's looking, it's, it, I mean, it's not been great, has it? No. It's been really quite disappointing. Um to have someone of that quality miss out on basically a whole season's worth of football just f- for not it's what sounds like she doesn't just doesn't want to play mm. for the club and you think of all that football she's missed out on mm. i think she was playing with the under 21s at one point and what what what's that going to do for a development mm. so but that's a prime example of of how much a manager can mean to someone 100% and how much a man- manager can make a difference and obviously mm-hmm. she must have had a really good relationship with Vicky Jackson mm-hmm. and you know with with Vicky going that's obviously switched something in him in Rinz's mind and it's thinking oh well well what am I, what, what what's for me now what's for yeah. me now like and she obviously wants something different for her, for the future and you know to be to be completely fair but I yeah, if she wants to be getting in that England squad, she needs to be playing in a really great team and she needs to be catching the eyes of her people. But she was catching the eyes while she was playing for us because she did get a she few call-ups. She got into the yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind difficult. of... You, yeah, you're kind of sitting on the fence with her because you can, from you know, from a player perspective, you can understand it. But then also you're kind of like, well, this 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 was a really big season for her as well. Because she's a really huge talent, mm. and she's you know she's carried us in a few games over the last twelve months. Mm-hmm. She's been she's been one of those players alongside the likes of like Rachel Finney, who's really like dug us out of a hard situation at times, and then to not see her play for six months, it's crazy, isn't five it? months, it's, it's like crazy. oh, like you know, you know. What, what could have gone differently, but for both her as a player and us as a team in some of those games, if she was involved. Do you know what I mean? You never know. We could, we could, we could be promoted. You, you just don't know. But yeah. it's it's down to her at the end of the day, isn't it? It's just a it's just a real shame. And I think that sort of rocked us all a little bit as well, because I don't think we've necessarily been in that situation before. Mm. I think obviously it's happened in in the men's side, but I didn't really think that this kind of stuff happened with the women's yeah. game. But I mean, here we are asking for things to be more like the men's game, and it's doing it. So. Mm. 
Um, that was that was huge when that first broke this season. Yeah. Um, I I genuinely don't see her in a Liverpool shirt next season. No, I don't. I don't think so. I think I've come to terms with that now. I think mo- most but of us. In have. fairness to to everyone else who's on the squad, they've they've coped fine mm-hmm. without her. Yeah, they've they've showed that they can score goals regardless of someone who was the top scorer at the mm-hmm. time. So yeah, true. It's positive. Yeah, I think it'd be a a it'd be good a good situation to keep an eye on this Definitely. summer. Um, a lot of people will want to be in for her as well. Yeah, because she's it's a just t- a fee. I she's a big talent, yeah. She's a big talent. So, because it's not, she she only signed a, a new contract with us not too long ago. A three year deal, and that's yeah, last so, summer. You know that that is a big fee for 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 another club coming in for us. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But mm. we'll 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 end it then. And but going into this summer and into a into a new season, yeah. What are you, what are you hoping for? Just fan perspective. What do you want from, from the, the from this summer? Um, I think stability. That's it's been so turbulent the whole mm. of the season. I think getting a few players, some fresh, some you know, will get you out of a hole when you need to. Get a manager, finalize all that because that's been going on for way <laughs> yeah. too long. Get a manager, see what's going on. Get some new players in. Try and tie down our old players. Mm. I think that's huge. Get the likes of Fernie. Tied down and 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 Lawley, if possible, Jade Bailey, all of these, get them all tied down, so you can use that as a pull to bring in more players. You say, look, we've got we've got Fernie. She's committed to this. She's committed to this plan. Come and join us and help us get there, sort of yeah. thing. So, I think stability is is what I'd like from this summer. I kind of want the next season to start already. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we've had a week. <laughs> yeah, we've had a week off. We, still, we don't like it. So no. Um. Yeah. I'm hope. I think I've got. I'm I'm trying to be positive for yeah. next season because I mean it can't be much worse than the last two seasons Surely put together. Not. Can't Surely be. not. We deserve we deserve a yeah. we deserve a break. We deserve a little bit of luck because yeah. it, luck hasn't been and, on our side. And you know, times. hopefully fans can be back. That's yeah, a huge thing. That's a huge talking point. I mean, I've uh, you've you've been able to make it to every game. I've been to three, which is in the whole time we've Cons- been doing this show. Yeah. I've I've hardly I don't think I've ever missed a home game. Yeah. And I've missed. I've only been to three this season. We should start doing away games. That'd be fun. We should. We yeah. need to do that. We need to do yeah. that. They're not too far away either. No, no. Yeah, next season. Next we'll season. do that. You heard it here. Yeah, well, hopefully we've um, we've talked about everything that has gone on in the Pills season. I hope you haven't missed any key moments. We'll probably finish this and be like, oh, we didn't speak about this because we do oh, that God. after every video or something always happens. But It's the main points I think we've yeah. covered. Yeah, and we've got our thoughts and feelings out there. So mm-hmm. um, we hope you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments below how you feel about Liverpool season, what you're hoping for next season. Um, but yeah, we'll see you all next time with a new video. Thanks for watching. Bye.